In the night of the 15th of October 2019, the 25-year-old Jan would walk into a bar in the small Dutch town of Rijnerwald. He looked disheveled, his hair unkempt. He proceeded to order five beers and down the mall, before telling the barman he needed help. His family had been living in secret on a farm just outside of town, never allowed to leave the house, and living in fear of the coming end of days. The police were called to take his statement, after which they drove him back home, saying they would figure it out some other time. Unable to go home in fear of being punished, he would remain outside the house for hours, then wander into town, and eventually lie down on a bench outside of the police station. At 8 a.m. the next morning, a police officer would walk out, telling him he had read his statement, and would like to talk to him inside. This is when they learned about the many forms of abuse that had taken place which eventually led three of the children to run away from the household in 2008, 9 and 10 respectively. The following day, police raided the house and found their father, who was unable to speak after having suffered a cerebral infarction in 2016, five other children, who were all of age just like Jan himself, and the actual tenant of the property named Joseph B. The father and tenant were both arrested on suspicion of abuse, sexual abuse, deprivation of liberty, and money laundering. It is even stated that they didn't know of any other humans that survived outside of their farm, but Jan did leave the house and go to the pub, so I call media nonsense. By now, most news outlets in the country had written articles on the situation, even though they had no information at all. Later in the day, many major outlets from around the world had joined in, and a bunch of talk shows covered the subject as well. Everyone was yearning for more information, yet it wouldn't come. For over a year there was nothing, until the documentary The Children of Reiner Walt was made, which is what this video is based on as well. The father, Gerrit Jan van Die, was a member of the Family Federation for World Peace and Unification, also known as the Unification Church. He would eventually meet Marianne, an Austrian woman with a set of beliefs close to his, and they would get married soon after. Even though she was Austrian, according to her, she had a Korean spirit, and she was a medium that would frequently be possessed by spirits, which Hedit would then converse with. They believed the end of days was approaching, and that they would be part of the few who survived, to found a new nation in the name of God, going so far as to assign each of their children a ministry which they would head. What the kids were supposed to actually do was never explained by him. They instead had to pray to God, and hope he would explain it to them, and look inside themselves to discover what it was. Of course, something like becoming an actor wasn't the correct answer. It had to have a certain degree of prestige, befitting God's chosen few. He had not chosen to be like this, but God had chosen him to be the prime father, according to him. Six out of the nine children, including Jan, were never registered with Dutch authorities. They had never gone to any outside school, only ever learning from the school of God. The other three did go to school, with a set of instructions, which included that they were never allowed to speak about their other siblings. He said that if they would let it slip, daddy might go to prison, and you wouldn't want that, would you? Gerrit also ran a blog on which he posted lessons for his followers. These would also include audio podcasts. This is an excerpt from I and What is Around Me. This is a process that sets foundation upon foundation. We need to keep our good relationship to God and take care of friends who could be called spiritual children or archangels in other terminology. We also need to build a safe home, a place of a secure and beautiful and harmonious environment around I and my family. I am not just I, I exist by my relations. My spiritual and physical health depends on how well I manage my relationships with God other people, the creation, the spiritual world. Their mother would be diagnosed with colon cancer in 2003, but she would not go for treatment, as their fading God should cure all. First she would stay at home, while their condition would slowly worsen, until they really couldn't manage at home, and she was brought to the hospital. She died soon after. When she was cremated, all the kids were there, but they were disallowed from referring to her as their mother. Instead, they were kids from a friend of hers. Shortly after her death, Gerrit would order the children to forget her, as she could only die because her fate wasn't strong enough, 
and she wasn't their mother anymore, forbidding them from speaking of her. He would later backpedal on this when he started forcing them to act as mediums, making them sit still for hours until the spirit entered them. They would then have to act as if they were possessed. Soon after starting this, they would be possessed by the spirit of their mother. They would have to act like her, and the other kids would have to regard them as their actual mother. He would also regard them as his actual wife, forcing both his second oldest Marian and third Aidino to always sit next to him as she would. He would refer to them as his wife, and they would have to sleep next to him, at which point he also performed sexual acts on both of these then underage children. Aidino would also one time be forced to walk through town in women's clothing, while he went to school in the same town. From here the many types of abuse would start. He would isolate the three oldest whenever they were tainted by the outside, or possessed by an evil spirit, making them sleep outside, and not feeding them for a day or more. Later the three oldest would be completely isolated when they were around the age of 12-13, as they were too tainted by outside influences. In their old house in Svartslaus, he had built extra rooms, so there were a couple of rooms between them and the rest of the family. They were in another part of the house entirely, and would not see their other siblings for over five years before they ran away. During this time, they would go to school, come home, and enter from the other side of the house so as to not be seen by their siblings, after which he would occasionally come upstairs to yell at them, hit them, or force them to sit up praying all night, even coming upstairs in the middle of the night to check if they were still praying, choking them until they passed out slowly became his trademark punishment as the years went on. He has told them it pained him greatly at to treat them this way, but they had to be pure to achieve their goal, and he knew of no other way. Also, God didn't say no. Multiple times he has told them to be very glad they lived in the current time where they would be missed, or he would have killed them already. After moving to Reinerwald in 2010, the six kids still living with him would never leave the farm grounds again for the entirety of the nine years until they were discovered being forced to spend the time in prayer, and waiting for ghosts to enter so they could act as a medium. The oldest son, Shin, always had it the worst from a young age. He was always the one to be punished for seemingly no reason. Most of it was that he was either under the influence of a bad spirit, or that he wasn't trying hard enough. By not being good enough, he was destroying God's future Eden, and turning the other children away from the light, just by being in their presence. Because of this, he was isolated from a young age and had to sleep in the shed in a dark age, their dog being his only friend. When he came home, he sometimes had to sit in an ice-cold bath for hours because he had looked at a girl in a sexual manner, which his father could always see in some way. One time, all the kids had to stand around Shin in a circle and throw mud at him to humiliate him. He even ran away one night with a pocket knife to kill himself, as that would finally end the pain, as he could do no right in his father's eyes. When each of the children left, the others were punished in their stead, as it was their failure as well for not deterring them. All of them felt they should have helped their siblings get away, and were glad Yan finally did what they hadn't. The court case against both men would cause a divide between the five younger and four older children, as the younger kids did not agree with their version of events, and still held the same faith as their father. Court ruling would be on the 4th of March 2021 where Gerrit Jan would be acquitted on all accounts because of his condition after having suffered cerebral infarction. He would have been unable to effectively participate in the case against him, unable to decide on the approach with his lawyer, unable to sufficiently understand the procedural documents, and unable to voice his version of events, which meant the defense would have been insufficient for the Dutch court of law, and any conviction would not be legally valid. After being acquitted, he returned to live with the five youngest of his children, by their and his request. On the 14th of June 2022, after this script was written, a final verdict would be cast in the case against Joseph B. He would receive three years of prison time for deprivation of liberty and would be acquitted of the abuse charges. For some reason, Gerald would file the court case of his own, demanding compensation up to an amount of 50,000 euros, as he was kept in police custody for too long, when the reason he was kept was to determine if he was fit to stand trial which is also why he was acquitted, he would receive nothing. In the end, the oldest of the children living with him turned on him, and he would be forced to live in a closed institution for at least a year and a half as of now. The older kids have continued their lives, and Jan has been doing fine as well. This is Dolores Sanctum, have a nice day.
love lessons from trees. Mm -hmm.